What I literally want you to do and you to do is make sure that you put an elevator on the tooth first. Yo, what up? It's a tip of the week. And today we're going to do it a little bit differently. For the next six weeks, I have common questions for a procedure that you guys typically want to do. So if you're the first time visiting this channel, I'm Dr. Jared Williams. I'm a conscious dental surgeon here in Houston, Texas. I work with over 30 different dental offices providing oral surgery, implants, and also IV sedation. And the case that we're going to talk about today is a lone standing third molar number 32. And we're we're going to discuss it and these are going to be common questions that you're going to have when taking care of patients that have these types of challenges all right it's going to be rapid fire this is basically live as we speak right now but i'm just going to give it to you off the cuff because it's a procedure that i just completed in dr Acorn. Acorn. I don't even know if she wanted me to say her name, but Dr. Acorn had. So this is going to be the next six weeks. I'm going to answer these questions or we'll see how it goes. I'll kind of play it by ear. All right. So let's do it. First, I want to say thank you for having me, uh, Dr. Williams, and thank you for allowing me to watch you so I can get <laughs> training from you, basically. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. All, All right. right. So my first question is always, anytime it's a, a lower molar, close to, the, um, you know, basically a lower molar, I always want to look and see how close it is to the IAN. So that was my first um, question, is the roots, are the roots too close to the IAN? And then this tooth kind of had curved roots and the crown was already fractured. So I was wondering, uh, my next question was gonna be, will the crown break away from the roots? Will the crown break away from the roots? All right, so let's do this. So you wanna make sure to see, are the roots, where's the roots in comparison to the IN? And then you're also looking at, will the crown fracture off from the actual roots. All right, so number one is this, before we even get started, what I typically like to do is make sure that the patient knows all the pros, the cons, and alternatives when we're working on a case like this. And that's super duper important simply because when something happens, not if, but when something happens, you'll literally be able to know, okay, the patient was aware of this. And that's something I really want you to pay attention to because if you don't, what's gonna end up happening is when the crap hits the fan, you're gonna be like, oh crap, what do I do, what do I do? And it's just like, well, these are things that would have happened. So the first question is this, number one, I would have traced the IN for the patient and myself when I'm doing a case like this because what happens is, like I said, if something happens, the patient knows, I know I'm more aware and I'm more patient, I, it could determine how fast or how quickly I could go about accessing this tooth and also making sure that I don't get in trouble at the same time. So when I look at this case, the alveolar nerve, is it close to the IN? No. I don't even think it's even touching the IN and that's very good because a pano is definitely going to blow things out of proportion. Generally, if I wanted to really make sure, I'd either get a CT scan or try to get a vertical bite wing that doesn't have any overshadowing or elongation on it, all right? Hope that makes sense. So to answer your question, no, the inferior alveolar nerve is nowhere close to that, the roots of this third molar. Does that answer your question? All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, the other question is this. Are the roots gonna break from the crown because there's so much decay, is that right? <laughs> all right, cool. You're good, you're good. Everybody has this, everybody have these, these questions, all right? So number one is this. If you look at this x-ray, there is a lot of decay, like completely, this tooth is basically bombed out. And so if you were to put a forcep on it, it's just gonna fracture. And so what I did and what you saw when we were doing this case is that you saw me literally get my elevator that I keep on telling everybody to purchase. It's gonna be a 303 of Apex Co elevator. And that elevator is so important because I literally tested it. After I got the patient numb, I put the elevator into the PDL space on the mesial portion of number 32. And what I did is I just elevated just to see, am I gonna have to cut this tooth out or am I gonna have to literally elevate it out? And for this case, it was pretty straightforward. I just tested it. The patient was able to literally, I was able to get my elevator, slide it into the actual alveolar space, elevate, and the tooth automatically started getting loose. And I was like, this is gonna be in and out. And so from there, after I did that, I put my forcep on it, started cracking. And I was like, all right, can't do that. So I gotta do a little bit more heavy lifting with my elevator. And once I did the heavy lifting with my elevator, that tooth just kind of just wiggled on out. 
and that was it. And so I believe that if you start off with your apex go angle elevator, it's really gonna tell you all the information that you need. You know, one thing that individuals typically do is they get their surgical handpiece and they start troughing. I hate the word troughing because it is not necessary. Like it's not necessary. You end up having bleeding, you end up having traumatic extractions, like it's not necessary. And so as you start working on your cases, what I literally want you to do and you to do is make sure that you put an elevator on the tooth first, right? And once you put the elevator on the tooth, it's gonna tell you what you're gonna have to do next. And so what I want you to do is think about it, like go in steps, go in order, so that when a case like this presents itself, it's not gonna be something that's gonna be super challenging. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. You literally just put your elevator in. All right, I got some movement. I can literally elevate this tooth out without having any issues. But if you don't do that, if you go the other way, put your forcep on it, fracture the crown off, then you gotta start digging. And I don't know about you, and I don't know about you, but I don't wanna make time for that bull crap because I'm just not in the, in the mood of wanting to create more work for myself. And by doing that, you're literally able to rock and roll, right? So does that make sense? <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So I just wanna let you know, like, if you put the forcep on the tooth, it's gonna fracture. If you were to try to trough it and get more space, it could potentially work, but that's not my way. Once again, elevate, 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 all right? Repeat after me, elevate, elevate, elevate. Once you elevate, have your Minnesota, get your 150, plug it out the patient's mouth, and let it go. And it was a wrap. And so if you look at this case, like this patient, let me just give you the background of this patient. So she comes in, um, I do my rapport building, I sit down and I talk with her and she's just cool. So you're here, so I'll speak to them. So the patient was sitting down really inconspicuous, didn't give off anything that would alert me to what she does or how she does business. And so after she's finished, she's like, are you done? And I was like, yeah. She was like, that was quick. I was like, I want to make sure that you're comfortable. And she was just like, well, with my patients, I was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. She was like, well, with my patients, I was like, wait a second, you have, you're have, in the medical field? She was like, yeah. She was like, I am a ICU nurse, surgical nurse. I was like, <laughs> so I was like, you weren't going to tell me anything? She was like, nope. And for me, I'm like, I could care less who comes to my office. I've worked on judges, lawyers, dentists, all the above, all the people that people are scared of. But you know, for me, I don't care who I work on and neither should you. The reason why is research shows that when you give preferential treatment to individuals, the care that you give goes down. And so on this channel, when you watch, I wanna make sure that you and you make sure that when you are treating your patients, you go by the JW method the easy method, the impactful, sustainable, and efficient. And so it doesn't matter if it is a doctor, a lawyer, and a judge. If you follow the principles that I'm giving you and I'm teaching on this channel, you'll literally smile after surgery. All right, guys, so I want to let you know if you're wanting to improve more and go a little deeper, I got a course down below. Check it out. It's going to help you go to that next level. It's going to literally allow you to smile after surgery. And then for all those that are like, yo, Dr. Williams, I want to get an improve on my local anesthesia. I have a book just for you. It's how to get any patient number. It's been downloaded thousands of times all around the globe. And literally what it's going to do is help you smile after surgery all right guys so as you see today was a new phase in this channel and the growth of it i have dr acorn here with me and she asked a question about this case and so i want to make sure that her questions were answered good all right cool and your questions are answered and one thing i feel like is this there's no such thing as a silly question so if anytime you have a silly question who cares you could email me send me a text even drop it in the comments down below so that you can literally smile after surgery. Besides, I need your help. I want the whole world to smile after surgery and I can't do it by myself. So why don't you do is this, like, subscribe, and share this information. Don't squeeze it and keep it to yourself. Like I, um, one of the names that we had in dental school. Don't be a squeezer. Let that information fly and you'll be surprised 
how far you go. All right, guys. So once again, I'm Dr. Jared Williams, and my focus is for you, yeah, you, and you to smile after surgery. Make it a great one.